Welcome everyone, it's Miss Gisa, and I have my guest, Miss Kelly from At The Liquid Medium, and Adele, my daughter. And today we're going to go on another culinary adventure. Kelly, what are we doing today? Well, hello. I want to extend a wintry welcome to all our budding scientists, aspiring creators, for our latest culinary adventure. We are full swing into our immunity series, and it's a great time to stock up on broth and learn more ways we can help our bodies optimize nutrition. The cold, dark dampness of winter allows us an opportunity to slow down and seek inner warmth. Our bodies are programmed to go into storage mode to conserve energy, but we also want our bodies to stay flexible during these cold months so we can emerge in the spring revitalized, ready to spring into action with a renewed sense of purpose. Today we'll learn how to make a nourishing bone broth that will help support us through the changes of seasons year-round. Broth is the foundation of many recipes, but most commonly used for soup. Ms. Jisa and Adele, what are your favorite soups and stews? Uh, well, my favorite soup is broccoli cheddar and minestrone, and I also like chili. We are a big soup family. I love soup, and so I also love minestrone. I love chili, I love uh, black bean soup, lentil soup, um, pretty much any vegetarian soup. Yeah, I've had Miss Jesus' lentil soup and it was fantastic. And I've also heard that the, uh, the Nico's minestrone soup is pretty epic too. So broth is a main character for many of my kitchen creations. It even inspired my social media handle, The Liquid Medium. I consider broth the medium for the artistic recipes I create in my kitchen laboratory. There are many different types of broth you can make, and today we'll learn how to make uh, chicken bone broth. And animal products like chicken are important sources of bodybuilding elements in the diet. Animal fats supply vitamin A and D, and animal proteins are rich in minerals B6 and B12. So by simmering a protein source like chicken with veggies and herbs, we can provide our bodies the opportunity to use the vitamins and minerals in the broth. This can be a tasty way to keep our bodies flexible and strong, our brains active and wise, and our souls nourished and kind. Another goal of making and consuming broth is to extract the gelatin and flavor from the bones. Adele, can you explain the benefits of collagen and uh, gelatin? The collagen molecules are what make bones, connective tissue, and muscles strong and flexible. Under a microscope, collagen molecule chains appear wound together into a helix rope-like fiber. When you heat collagen molecules, they will come apart and dissolve into the liquid. This process of unwinding the molecules is how we get gelatin. Adele, that was an excellent job explaining the scientific process of how broth can be a homemade source to help increase our collagen and gelatin consumption. Bone broths are a universal and diverse part of many different cultural diets, and soup can be found on the menus of the world's greatest cuisines. Some people even have soup for breakfast. Uh, bone broths are near and dear to my heart for so many reasons, and I think they are one of the most budget-friendly, valuable sources of nutrition. Making your own bone broth is an economical opportunity to support local, pasture-raised farms so they continue to raise animals in a humane and healthy way. There have been many times when my family has not been able to splurge on expensive food items, and I've created some of the heartiest meals simply with the bone broths I have in my freezer and some seasonal veggies. So satisfying and nutritious. Ms. Gisa, can you tell us what are some traditional Italian soups? Sure. So minestrone obviously is one that probably most people are familiar with. Um, different people make minestrone different ways in Italy. Uh, my parents do uh, just veggies, but some people add pasta to their minestrone. Um, and then another soup that is really popular that our family has during the holidays, like during the Christmas holiday and Thanksgiving is, and actually uh, Easter too, the spring holiday, um, is called stracciatella. 
and the best way to describe it is egg drop soup but it's not the same it's not made the same way that the Chinese uh, make the egg drop soup it's quite different but um, you basically have a really hot boiling pot of water and you um, put in the bead, beaded egg and then you add lemon and parmesan and the egg um, kind of comes together it's it's very liquidy at first but as you, you there's a lot of stirring involved uh, and then it kind of clumps up but it's got to be the right clump you don't want it too clumpy so um, it's really delicious and we look forward to it for the holidays i'm gonna have to get that recipe <laughs> yeah sure it's it's quite easy it, it's it's only you know your arm kind of gets tired a little bit because it's a lot of stirring but it's there it's no, there's nothing hard about making it yeah and it's like such a great way to have a simple like hearty meal um, absolutely bread and you're all set well today's broth recipe was created with the intention to not only taste wonderful but also to support our immune system and nervous system in our last episode on elderberries, Adele explained how our immune system helps protect us from viruses. Elderberries help strengthen our immune system, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to introduce more ingredients that help support our good health and help us recover when we're not feeling well. We'll get support from the collagen and gelatin to help our muscles, bones, and skin. Um, the mushrooms that I added to the broth help increase our immunity and provide antioxidants. The astragalus root is an adaptogen plant that traditional Chinese medicine has used for centuries. It helps our bodies adapt during times of stress or illness and supports a healthy nervous system. The dried jujubes, also known as the Chinese date, are a fruit locally grown in California and they help quiet anxious feelings and support healthy sleep patterns. I put some seaweed in, which is another great resource for antioxidants and a natural source of iodine. The veggies I use provide a delicate flavor and a rainbow of good nutrition. And even the bay leaves play an important role in aiding in good digestion. Are we ready to watch how to make your very own beautiful bone broth? Absolutely. Yes. Great, let's go. <laughs> Ooh, it is cold outside. I hope everyone's staying warm. Let's head into the kitchen so we can make some broth. I think we can all agree that a nice bowl of warm soup um, or broth is just fabulous in the winter time when it's cold out. Um, I use broth year round, so it's something that I make in bulk and I freeze it and pull it out as needed. Um, we'll get to the different sizes of containers that you can use, but for now, um, let's make a really basic uh, chicken broth I keep the flavor really simple um, so you can add in um, as you use the broth and, and make it your own. Um, so with chicken broth, you can use either a whole chicken or parts of the chicken. I save all of my bones um, from cooking chicken for dinner in the freezer. A lot of times I'll get a whole chicken and um, I'll save the backs, which are, are meaty and have good bones. So right here, I have a nice big bag of bones and chicken backs. And in this bowl over here, there's um, some more chicken backs that I actually purchased from the butcher shop. You can do that as well, um, if just specifically for making broth. And the really special ancient ingredient are the chicken feet. Really maximize the gelatin that's created in your broth, which is just more good nutrition. So right off the bat, what you want to do is add um, all of the chicken pieces into the bowl, cover them in water, and we're going to let that sit for an hour. After that sits for an hour, um, you're going to bring it up to a boil and there's some scum that floats to the surface and you want to just skim that off and then you can add in your veggies um, and other herbs. So today we're going to use um, some aromatics, which would be onion, carrot. I save and freeze um, celery tops to pull out specifically for broth. I also save all of the stems um, when I cook mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms have all sorts of healing properties um, and they add a really wonderful flavor to the broth. 
And I think that's a great way to really get the most bang for your buck. Um, I had also a few months ago dehydrated some jujubes when they were in season. And jujubes are an amazing uh, ingredient. They help with anxiety and they help you sleep. We're gonna put um, seaweed in our soup, which is a beautiful natural source of sodium. There's so many nutrients in seaweed. Eat lots and lots of seaweed. Um, my other favorite ingredient for the broth is astragalus root. This astragalus root is from a company called Pacific Botanicals. Astragalus root is an adaptogenic herb and adaptogens do exactly that. They help us adapt when our bodies are under stress and strain. And can't forget to throw in a couple bay leaves as well. Okay. So, I have the chicken in the pot, and just wanted to do a quick hand washing plug. I know we always wash our hands when we're in the kitchen, but it's extra important when you're handling any kind of um, raw meat. So, I have nice clean hands. I'm ready to add some filtered water to my soup pot. So now we have our pot full. I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour. We'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like once it's boiling and we're ready to start skimming. This is uh, where I get all of my broth recipes from. You don't have to get this book, but I highly recommend it. Um, it is full of wonderful recipes and really abundant information. Um, and this recipe, is is probably doubled. Um, typically you would use about three pounds of, of a combination of bones and feet and I have probably closer to six. Uh, so we are going to have a whole broth factory in the liquid medium laboratory. I'll see you back in a few. The reason why I'm using an electric burner is we have a gas stove and this broth needs to cook for 24 hours. I'm not so comfortable leaving the gas on um, overnight while we're sleeping. Um, so I feel that this is a safer option. I bought this one on uh, Amazon. It's called a Cuisinex. I'm really happy with how it works. You can also use a crock pot. Um, those are really safe ways to do broth on your countertop overnight. So now we're gonna take a look and you can see that this um, kind of foam scum has risen to the surface. And what you want to do is take a perforated spoon and you can just skim that right off the top. So you'll do a couple passes and then we'll be ready to add in the rest of our ingredients. And it's as simple as bringing it down to a very slow simmer. I'll put a cover on it and We'll check back in in 24 hours. I have all of my ingredients here and it's, you don't even have to peel the carrots or onion. Again, we're going to use um, our aromatics, onion, celery, carrots, and a nice handful of seaweed, our jujubes, and some bay leaf. We're gonna add in the mushroom stems and last but not least, our beautiful astragalus root. Getting very full, but this will uh, this will cook down a little bit and create more space. And you can really make this your own. You can add in ingredients. You can omit ingredients. You can really just customize it to your taste. Look at how beautiful it looks. I wish you were here and you could smell. It just is so comforting. So now I will reduce the heat. We're gonna go down to a nice uh, low simmer and we'll put the lid on and check on it periodically um, before we turn in for the night. So here is our broth after 24 hours. 
you can see it's a really nice rich color and everything is um, very cooked down. So what you want to do here is safely bring the temperature down. Uh, you want to cool it off so you can pour it into your containers. So I'm going to put it in my sink filled with ice cold water. And while that's cooling, if you want to kind of maximize your time, you can start straining out uh, the large pieces. Um, and then from there, you'll want to strain it through a fine mesh. You can see I already got into it for another recipe. Um, and then we'll use this container to pour our broth um, into our freezer containers. I'll show you that once we're cooled off here. Final stop on our broth adventure. We got pretty good yield here and I like to use various size containers. Um, in the blue containers, those are one cup. Um, below that, we have what I call little flavor bombs. These are great for throwing in recipes that just ask for like a half cup of broth. And then um, we got almost six quart size containers. So I'm really happy with these results. I'll pop these in the fridge overnight and then uh, in the morning I'll show you how to remove the layer of fat that forms once it's really cool and we'll see um, how much gelatin we were able to extract. Here's our broth after it's been in the fridge um, overnight. I want to show you uh, the last step in this process. So this layer on top here is um, just a layer of, of solid fat that's risen to the surface and you can just kind of scrape this back. Sometimes it'll even come off in a whole solid layer and you can dispose of this as you like. Probably don't want to put it down your drain, um, but you can um, feed it to the birds in your neighborhood or just dispose of it. So once we skim this off the top of the surface, I want to show you the consistency of the broth. This is what we wanted to achieve, breaking down those um, collagen molecules into gelatin. So you can see how nice and gelatinous this is. Um, another example of turning a liquid to a solid, back to a liquid. Um, this is going to make really hearty broth. And last but not least, I'm going to just snap this cover on, label my broth, we know what's in the freezer and I'm going to store all of those in the freezer to defrost as needed. So now that our broth laboratory is all stacked up, are you ready to try some uh, chicken bone broth? And then Miss Gisa, I made you um, some nice miso soup for you to Thank try. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's get Adele. I'm gonna... What's great about broth is this is just one of many recipes. There's so many different versions you can make, um, tons of good vegetarian options, uh, which I chose the, the miso for that reason, for Miss Jesus. Yes. Thank you so much, Kelly. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I just encourage everybody just to try to make some version of it at home. It's really, really satisfying. And it's, it's such a nice kind of pantry item to have on hand in your fridge. And then you can freeze the leftover, right? That's what I end up doing and just, you know, pulling it out, defrosting it before whatever meal I want to have it with. Yeah, it's really good in lunches to go. If you've got a th your favorite thermos, just carry some broth with you. Uh, oh, this miso is delicious. Yeah, mm. this is pretty good. Delicious. You like it? Yeah. Good. So Adele, you're trying it plain. Well, yeah. just on its own. So just with a little bit of salt, it's... It's pretty good. It's it doesn't need much. Yeah. But some things that you can add in for flavor. Um, I like to put a little bit of um, an infused like herbal vinegar. Uh, soy sauce is really good. Um, you can put fish sauce. You can put miso. So there's also a school of thought that um, just by sipping on broth, it helps your nervous system relax. And when your nervous system's relaxed, your digestion is really able to work efficiently. And, and that's something that keeps our bodies 
um, healthy, strong, good levels of energy. So just the simple, and that's, that's the whole thing with it. It doesn't have to be a particular source of broth. It's just getting that um, warm nutrition. This is, this is amazing. I could just eat this every day. I really could eat soups every day. One that I didn't mention earlier, tomato too. Like tomato soup is just so good. Tomato soup. Yeah, I, I love all kinds of soups. So comforting, yeah. <laughs> so Kelly, tell us about what we're doing next. It's pretty exciting. Well, next I'm really excited to celebrate Mardi Gras with all of you. Um, it's kind of fun to bring these celebrations into our home with food since we can't really travel or participate in big group events. So we're going to make some really festive recipes. We might even have some really fun costumes for everyone to look at. And, and we uh, encourage you to dress up at home too if you have any Mardi Gras flair that you'd like to join in and wearing. Yeah, we would love to see pictures of all of you. Uh, I want to really thank everybody who supports our channel and shares with their friends and um, checks in with us with the recipes that they're making. We, we really enjoy interacting with all of you. It's great. We really do. Thank you for, for watching and supporting and yeah, sending us pictures of what you're making. And uh, we really, we love that. So well, and beyond the King Cake episode, we're going to go back to our immunity series um, and we're going to talk about some really interesting um, seasonal things that, that you can be doing to support good health. So we can't wait to see you back for that. But in the meantime, um, why don't you go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Till next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>